When you pray, things should happen. When you pray, okay. And uh, we had a conference, uh, and Bertie was there, and his wife was there, right? Just stand up, wave in case they forgot who you were. And a few people here were there, just wave, people that were there, okay. We just had a conference, and uh, we were redeeming the African Bride at the Southern Gate on Ruth 4, as, as the gates opened on Friday last week. And the whole thing on Ruth is that uh, they come back from Moab, she has no one but her mother-in-law, yeah, I'm on mid Yeah. And um, Boaz has to redeem her at the gate with 10 witnesses. But the issue of her redemption comes with a piece of land. So the piece of land is going to be given to this man. And he says, no, I don't want to marry this woman. So Boaz says, okay, let it be witnessed. And I'm going to buy her and the piece of land. So I want you to understand that we're dealing with people and land. People and land have to be redeemed to come into their full stature, okay? And so we believed God, that God was going to redeem Africa and specifically the Southern African Bride, made up of all the tribes and tongues. And uh, the report came in on Sunday, I don't know if some of you heard this on the news, but this was Sunday's report. Because when you pray, something must happen. When you pray, something must happen. And it actually should be in the news. In fact, if it's in the news, it's quite good. It means it's already happened and it's true. On Sunday, an 89-year-old lady who has been going to her church for the last number of years, and she's the only one that uh, is coy. Okay? She forced removals. All her people are buried at this church, so she wants to be buried there. So she was going to church every Sunday at Kirstenbosch. And they gave her the land. Wow. Sunday. She's 89. Wow. Would you say God is speaking? Wow. You see, when you have a piece of news like that, you can say, what is God saying? God is saying, I'm about to turn around the captivity. Wow. I'm about to give you things yes. back. I'm about to restore stuff that you thought was so lost and so dead. But you see, I am the Lord, I change not. It may take 10 years, it may take 100, it may take 10 seconds or 10 minutes, but I know what I'm going to do in this time. Amen? And so we are interested in the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God and of His Christ, that He's going to rule and reign forever. Now when Jesus died, He died for everybody. Is that true? Yes. And He died for all the nations and the tribes and the tongues. Yes, yes. Okay, good. You need to talk to me because I need to know you're here with me and you're awake. Otherwise, I'm going to, you know, toy toy here. Okay? <clears throat> so, Jesus, slain from before the foundation of the earth, the slain lamb, contracted with God for every nation, tribe, and tongue. And God the Father is so interested in this contract that in Acts 2, he says, Ask of me. Yes. It isn't a suggestion. And I say, darling, Dirk, I said, believe can I for my throne? No, it doesn't work like that. The statement is strong. Ask of me. I am commanding you to pray like this. Ask of me, and I will. I'm not going to play, I'm not going to negotiate, I'm, I'm not going to play shy here. I will do what? Give you what? The nations. Why? For your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. That's what it says. Do you think we live on an end of the earth? If you go to the sea, you know we're on the end. Did you know that? Yeah. Okay, that's us. We're an end. Hello? Yes. The continent ends here. Did you know? Yes. Okay, just in case you didn't know. 
Shout to the Lord, all you islands. Praise him from the ends of the earth. Right? Isaiah 42, verse 10. What's your job? Shout and sing. So if you wonder why everybody's shouting and singing, it's because we're repositioned. Yes. We've got to shout, we've got to sing. It's part of, the deal, part of this deal here, okay? And, you know, when I read Revelations 5, and you see the lamb that was slain, what happens is there's a scroll in the hand of the lamb. And then before him are all these nations, tribes, and tongues who start to worship. And all the angels are going nuts. Do you know that's the scene? That's the, that's the worship service we actually are practicing for right now. Did you know that? Hello? There will come a day when every nation, tribe, and tongue is going to stand with harps and bowls before him. And the Chinese are going to be there. And you know they sing very high. You know when they sing it's a like that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be very interesting to be in the midst of every sound that it ever wants. Son. Amen? Because you are an instrument of worship. You are a tuning fork to heaven. Do you know that when we hit heaven every now and again, the tuning fork on the inside of you go, ee, ee, that was good. And then you, you kind of feel this, this like pins and needle thing that you go, I want to sit. But you can't sue it. And if you've got alchani, it's just a tuning fork. It just went, ooh. I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate that God will have his dream. That's his dream. Amen. And we are part of his dream. And we're going to make the Father's dream come true. Amen. And so he sent his son to make sure he would have his dream. Yes. And you know, Pastor AJ started it with the intercessors and it says, we were like those who dreamt. But I'm saying to you, we will fulfill the Father's dream. Because the son wants to please the Father. Yes. And the Father has promised the Son a bride that is going to look yes. incredibly colorful. Yes. That is going to have every sound and every color. Hallelujah. 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 All oh at once in a sea of glass. Ready yes. to rule and reign with Him. And how are we going to get there? Ask of me. I will give you. Amen. Now I just want us to look at Revelations 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. How many seals? Seven. Seven, seven speaks of perfection or completion. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. You know, I'm going to quote Dr. Mensah Ottable. Dr. Mensah Ottable says, we are crying right now in Africa. Because we've had prophetic word. Africa's time is now. Do we need somebody else to give us that word? I think we've heard it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just go replay, yes. Africa's time is now, replay, Africa's time is now, replay. Yes, replay. Okay? Africa's going to do this. Africa's going to do that. But, can someone administrate the word now? Can someone explain to us what does that actually mean right now in 2006 and how are we going to work this thing up? How do we see this thing? Who is worthy, really, to open up this deal? Because we need some interpreters. We need some cryptologists. 
We need people who understand the mysteries of heaven, how to open up this word. Okay, Africa's time is now for what? Okay? What are you saying? How does Africa make a difference to the uttermost parts of the earth? How are we going to have global impact? What does that actually mean? Amen. And what happens in heaven, in Revelation 4, the chapter before this, there's a voice that sounds like a trumpet. Yeah, we got the prophetic voice again. Yes. Sounds like a trumpet. We have in prophecy again. Right? That's opening up a door and we get an invitation. Come up here. Where is up here? Up here is into the throne room of heaven, the glassy sea, the council room of God. This is where God holds parliament. Yes, yes, this is yes. God's government. Yes. Mm. Who has stood in the council of the Lord and seen and heard his word? Because you see, if you had seen and you had heard, you would prophesy correctly and you would understand how to run with vision. It's Jeremiah 23 and verse 18. Have you stood in the council, in the parliament of heaven, where the legislative degrees go out from heaven? From before the foundation of the earth, God had made certain decisions about how certain things would be. You see, you don't wake up one day and decide, I feel like having a ministry, I feel like having a church, I feel like this, I feel like that. God has already written the script. We read it and do it. And it's only anointed because he's paid for it with his own blood. Hello? Amen. It's not because we're clever. It's just because we were chosen before the foundation of the earth. And we found our slot. And we fit it into the slot. Into the slot. And so there's a slot for every tribe and nation and people group. That, and they carry redemptive purposes and anointings and giftings that are needed by the rest of the body. Otherwise... This whole bride is not going to work. Okay. So while we look at the pattern of Billy Graham and everybody wants to be Billy. Nah? And for a while everybody in Africa was an evangelist. Nah? Everybody was an evangelist because everybody's picture was we all need to be like Billy. Billy's the boy. Billy boy. You know? And then everybody wants to be a prophet. Now the next thing is everybody wants to be an apostle. You know? Apostles Anonymous, AA. No, I'm sorry. I can make a joke about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, at one point we were rushing to be teachers. And Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen came out with all these, you know. Everybody wanted to teach. Pastor, sorry, you were, you were there in the 60s. That was your, you know. Nobody's rushing to be a pastor these days. We pray for you. Bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you, pastors. Bless you. Be anointed. Yeah, Hallelujah. <laughs> but seriously, you know, we, we all look for, looking for an identity and a place to fit. Just read your scroll, man. The problem is you don't know how to read. Put your hands on your eyes. Father, thank you right now. For eyesight. We need to read our yes, scrolls yes, in yes, the season. Yes, 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 yes. And you see, when, when the doors are open, it's Daniel's verse uh, 7, verse 9 says, and thrones were put in place. And the ancient of days was seated. And the court was seated. And books were opened. And thousands of thousands of angels ministered to him. And a fire went before him. Do you know that scripture? I'm just quoting. And its wheels are flames of fire. It's a very fiery God that sits on a very fiery throne that reviews some books at this time. And what books are he lo is he looking at? He's looking at the books of life to see if your name is written. But the Jews every year practice for Judgment Day. <laughs> And it's not just that their names get written in the book. It's that they get promoted or demoted in the season. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry, you're saved. You're going to heaven. That's not the issue. The issue is the prophecies we got, 
the anointings we've got, the mantles we've got, what did we do with it? And God sits in heaven and looks. Do I give them the next level or do I take away? Do I promote or do I demote? Is it time to show them off or can I, must I pull them back? Hello? You, you must understand, we are in a very serious moment in time. The, the doors have opened for heaven. We have an open heaven. The, the books are open and we're being reviewed by a board of angels. Hello? Did you know angels walk up and down and measure you all the time? Did you know that they're angels with measuring sticks? Their whole job is measurement. Hmm? And so, they've been measuring Pastor AJ all his life. Okay. Who bread is that scholars? Who bread? Who bread? Can I do fat no? No, no. Who long is the arm? Who like it? Who like it? Are you hearing? They go through your city and they measure your city. To for what? For what? Who come? What? No. Can the glory of the Lord come? Can you sustain? Do you have the DNA? It is destructive to stand under the glory of the Lord that God has prepared from before the foundation of the earth for Jewish, for South Africa, for every tribe and tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. And so, I said to God, tell me about South Africa. How do we release the prophetic destiny of this nation? And this was like 12 years ago or so, and the Lord said, it's time to see unity. Okay, at this point now, we're all repeating to each other a lot. No? And you heard a grand power today. All the white people are saying, now how much longer must I repeat that I'm white? Eh? Okay? And then you've got black people here going, how much longer must I repent that I'm black? And then you've got Mersha pregnant lads. I'm so glad I'm in between. You've got to sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you like that one? I said, man, and then man, I can't get great, right? Mm. But you see, the deal is that God sent spiritual fathers from Europe with a deposit and they had gifts and they came and laid those gifts on us as a people and they laid mantles and it was incredible what they brought they brought every revival every move every wave on that sea of glass came to Africa did you know that? and we're going to concentrate what came to the Khoi people the Khoi San people and in 1737 here comes a guy called George Smith from Germany. And what is he carrying? He's carrying a package deal. What's the package deal? Hello? The package deal is a baton of 100 years plus of prayer for the nations. What is the motto? We will not let the fire go out, day or night. One man, one woman, on the hour, every hour, 24-7, praying for the nations. And God has a look at Africa and says, And he says, okay, these guys, these crazy guys that can run for 40 days and not eat very much, that can read the stars, Talk to beetles, click a lot, <laughs> dig out roots. They hardy. Man, this is a heavy thing. We built it up, yes, man. Yes, this is a yes. hundred plus years of muscle movement. Yes. It's coming. But we had to build it up for over a hundred years to send it north. And who does he send it to? These gritty guys. Because God said, I put it in your DNA to handle this one. Come on, man. Yes. Because you must understand. Yes. What did you 100 years of bitterness for Oorsak in Europe? 
It started to change social structure. We're no more. It changed, challenged social structure and governmental structure. It began to, began to challenge class. And you mean so, and it means so, and it's going to Yeah, it's going So, there's a whole issue in this package. The package is not just prayer. The package is, we're going to change the government. Through prayer. Because Count van Zinzendorf would go to places his missionaries went to where they threw them in jail and he'd go and say, excuse me, I know the king of this one and I know the prince of that one and we'll have this little chat and release my missionaries. So they had governmental influence. And God is going to find us some people who are going to connect to this thing that are going to have governmental influence. Yes, yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. I'm on bay. Yes. I'm on bay. Yes. 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 So these people, these 24 7 prayer guys, decide their logo, their banner, their standard is going to be the same there. Right? Is your limit now? What does that mean? It means something very interesting. Look at Revelation. Who is worthy? No one was found worthy. Verse 5. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. So it takes a lion to prevail. Right? So when Jacob prevails, what happens to Jacob? Yeah. He becomes a prince with yeah. God. He has a name change. He becomes Israel now. But he has to pay in his hip. And he lives for the rest of his life because he birthed through into a whole new identity. Amen? Yes. So here is this lion. And he's prevailed. So it's going to take a fight to grip a hold of what God said. Okay? Dit gaan nie net vir my gebeur nie, wat die Heer het gesê, dit gaan net gebeur, ons gaan net sit en wacht. Die Heer gaan vir altyd wacht, because you've got to go into a place of fighting for the word. Even after it's open, because it takes a lion to begin to open this. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne, in the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood, a lamb. So, John stands up, and he gets told, don't worry, this scroll is going to be read, and the lion's got it. But when he turns around to see the lion, he doesn't see a lion. Who does he see? Look at this. It says, stood a lamb. He hears from the angel, don't worry, there's a lion. When somebody says to you, there's a lion, you, know, you turn around to see a lion. He turns around and doesn't see a lion. He sees a lamb that has been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of of the saints and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every how many every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth amen that's the story and so you must understand, when you lift up a banner called the slain lamb, this is what you are saying. I know how to read the scroll. I know how to read the scroll. And when I don't know how to read a scroll, I'm under the banner of the guy who can read the scroll, so I'll read it at some point. Amen. It's time to read scrolls. 
strongholds of other nations. Jeremy yes. Heath. Father, I thank you right now for revelation ability to begin to read the scrolls already written before the foundation of the earth. I am marching under the banner of the slain man. Hallelujah. And so George Smith arrives in 1737 and he goes to where? Canardendal, which is the valley of mercy and grace. <laughs> Because there's, God's about to have mercy and grace on a people called the Khoisan. And he's about to have so much mercy and grace that he gives them this inheritance. That they are the only people in the region that can read and write. That's what happens. This is the history. They read and write. And so, the Nederdeits Gerufumierde Magisterial District decides, hello with eight. Because our people can't even read in the Amat. Once with means, I can't hear from yes, me. No, take any means. And it's so much fast on the boss and it's like yes. And it's great. Now we've got to do something. So they say to the man, we don't recognize your ordination as a minister. Goodbye. And he's gone and he leaves until uh, in 1944 and he. The work can, can only have permission to resume 48 years later in 1792. 48 years. And when they re re return, there's only a lady left. Her name is Magdalena. And she still has his Bible in a leather satchel. And she's taught her daughter. Mothers teach your daughters how to read the Bible. And pray. And that's how the work resumes. And um, by 1838, the first education, now this is the first mission station on African soil, and the first educa education facility in this region is, is here as a teacher's training college in 1838. I want to say to you if the first training facility for teachers is here, what does it say about your redemptive purpose in education, ladies and gentlemen? You better make sure all your people can read. Hello? Literacy courses start in Jesus' name. Your people must read. And they must write. And they must primarily read the Bible. Can you imagine they probably read it in German? My goodness. English. English, yes. old English is bad enough. Old German. <laughs> and the Koi were doing this. Hello? In yes. 17 whatever. Hello? Okay? Which means you can. Yes. It means you can. Yes. It means you can. Yes. And it was the first training facility for teachers. All the teachers in this room wave at me. Everybody trained as a teacher, wave at and stand up. Stand up, I want to see. Stand. Stand and wave. Father, we thank you. Multiply teachers. Multiply teachers right now in the name of Jesus. And multiply the teaching anointing yes. to the body right now. We receive them. Receive them. Receive them. We call them in. Teachers, yeah. teachers, yeah. teachers. We want you. We want you. We need teachers. Now, if you can read and write, and the people around you can't, what does it give you? What does it give you? Hello? Opportunity? What does it give you? Power. Communication power. And ability to govern. We have to train the next generation governmental principles of the kingdom of heaven. Hello? This is your stewardship yes. for your people. How are we doing? How are we doing? Are you receiving this? Because you see, let me explain to you. When the missionaries first came to Africa, they really had government in place in Europe. Because all of these movements had changed Europe. So 
So Europe had gone from a feudal tribal goody to uh, what kind of system? Um, kings and queens. Ne? Kings and queens. And finally, they had expanded their boundaries. So when Kwame Nkrumah says to the British, I want my people want to rule ourselves. Because now they've gone off to war with the British and they saw white people die just like black people died. I thought, well, they're not very special. They also bleed like me. So then, what's kind of self be here? Okay, this is the thinking pattern. Okay, if you want more of this, we've got it. It's Dr. Mensa Ottable, it's John Lalindi, you can get the info. Right. So what happens now is they say, we must rule. No? No, we must rule. And so what happens is all the British administrators left. Now what did they do? They redrew the map of Africa. If you go to Nigeria, there's like 92 dialects. Now look how small Nigeria is. Now just make 92 little circles in there. And each one has its own little king, its own little village, its own little khuta. And they had a great time fighting each other. And they couldn't even speak to each other because if you went too far, they didn't understand you. So the good thing that the colonists did is they gave them a language that could at least fight better. Because they understood exactly what the insult was now. <laughs> Now, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's yeah. very important that you hear what I'm saying. So, they totally changed the boundaries and the borders. And now, Colin Krimer came back, and now the administrators have gone and says to the missionaries, he says, listen here. Now, we had our own system. We had all our crawls and all our stuff, and we knew how to fight our stuff, and we had our own rules, and, and now you guys came in, and you changed the whole thing, and we don't know how to rule such a big place. You know? Because it's changed, like, we can't go back to like we used to, because it's, you've changed it. The world is different. How am I going to govern? You've got to give me help here. You've got to give me an understanding of government. You know what the missionary said? Probably Anglican, huh? <laughs> Sorry, all the Anglicans will love you. He says to the Anglicans, so now give us an understanding of how we're going to govern. So you know what the, you know what the Church of Jesus Christ at that point in time said? Oh, well, you know, politics is not spiritual. So, we can't help you. And so the Marxists, communists said, Hello, this is our opportunity. Let's jump in here. And out of Kwame and Krimer's home, Samora Michelle graduates. Big mess, you may know. How was that, Mozambique? Poorest nation. Um, Mr. Kenya, I can't remember his name now, graduated. Abdul Nasser, first president of Egypt, graduates. Okay? Jomo. Can't I can't think, my brain's just on. But all these people actually graduate out of this man's house because he started a training school for nation. Hello? Yes. If you're not getting sick, I'll pray for you, because you should get sick right now. Because the Church of Jesus Christ missed it. Please help us. Tell us how to do this. We don't know. This is not spiritual. Excuse me. We are preparing for Jesus Christ to come and be the king. And sit in Cape Town's parliament and be the king. Do you know that? This government has got a temporary job. Come on now. Yes. We actually believe... We don't believe in capitalism, we don't believe in democracy, we don't believe in anything. We believe that God will actually be okay. the government. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because the government will be upon his shoulder. And yes. that will be for wonderful counsel yes. of God is ever yes. 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 And of this government, the increase of this government and peace will be no, no end. Yes. It didn't cover the entire earth, period. Yes. That's my Bible. How's yours? Mm. Say that. But in the meantime, we've got to live in a system that men create. And if we don't have people who begin to understand who they are in God, then we're going to rule and reign. Hey. How are we going to rule and reign? Except for the brains we have and how we think and the filter system that we now have. And now if you don't understand your identity, all of that's going to come up messed up. 
How are we doing? Yes. yes. So God sends mantles from Europe to the rainbow nation. There's a rainbow of mantles. We have received the most incredible deposits. I mean, everybody arrived on our shore. Smith Wigglesworth, he saw. John G. Lack, next. Man? Yes. Andrew Murray, here it is. Okay? George Smith, thank you very much. Back. Can we go on? We can go on. We can. And who did it land on? And where did it land? On the southern tip. Why? Just so you can all be blessed. And be blessed. And stay out and be blessed. And be blessed some more. Hmm? It was for the rest of Africa. The rest of Africa. It was for the rest of Africa. It was for the rest of Africa. Because God wants to send an apostolic company from the ends of the earth to start marching. Yes. Now, I don't know who you're waiting for, because you need to look in the mirror. <laughs> Come on, man. Amen. Do you understand me? Yes. yes. Look in the mirror. It's you. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Who yes, yes, you. No, not me. Then who? <laughs> Hello? Tell the person next to you it's about you. <laughs> yeah, it's you. I want you to write something down. Have you got a pen? This is a good state. Are you ready? I'm going to say it slowly. The revelation of the slain lamb will cause a revolution of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I'll read it again. Is that a good statement? Yes. yes absolutely. The revelation of the slain lamb will cause a revolution of the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So in 1999, I tried to find somebody who would please be coy to receive that. And this was the response. I guess they're mine. You see coy mentor. I guess they're coy What's a son? No? Yeah. Just like that. Next one. I want you to know that in the last weekend, they did DNA testing on a number of people that are famous, including um, Becky. Yeah. And you can find out where your, your, all your tribes and tongues come from in your DNA, you know. And oh. Becky's whole right. tribes come from Central Africa. Some people were listening. Now, the funniest thing is Peter Duke is is coy. Come on, man. <laughs> now, I want you to know that the TV is prophesying to you that the coy all need to be spoken of, right? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Peter Duke Ace is cool. <laughs> the ambassador of whatever. <laughs> but seriously, God is speaking. Yes. And they just And apparently the man was like, okay. was in, where was he, in Persia? In, where was the place? Yeah. Persia? Yeah? Babylon, what was that? I'm the Kusma Dear Makar. Help me? I'll, I'll need to hear this. Dear Makar, meet me because you're not on stream. <laughs> Pass this boss here then. Come here, help me. So, where's Daniel? Yes, yes. He's in Persia. Yes. Anyway, so, praise the Lord. Amen. So, <laughs> Daniel is not hearing God. And so the dream goes to the king. Amen. Because if the apostolic headship of the church does not hear what God wants to say to a country, then the next in rank has to, and it will be the president. Yeah. Sure. 
And so, Robert Mugabe heard a word. It's time to take territory, time to take yes. land. But he heard it through his filter. His filter says, take it from white people, give it to black people, that's how you're going to sort it out. But that's not what he heard. He heard in the spirit, it's time to take land. Yes. It's a spiritual issue. But he's going to interpret it by who he is. Because if the apostles of the land do not hear what God is saying to the church, then the next in line is to hear. Now the next in line, hello, yes. in our context is Tom and Becky. And Tom and Becky makes a speech and says, Bar is the koi. Yeah. So Bar is the koi. Answer, we are here positioning ourselves right now, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Because actually, yes. we are still discovering ourselves, but we are hurrying up as fast as we can. Yes. 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 Because, excuse me, we understand who we are, we understand our heritage, we understand we are going to come now and tell you what we want to see in education. Amen. Yes. Come on now. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. We want to see prayer restored. Like never before. And we don't want to apologize to, um, excuse me, Arab people who are coming into our schools and taking over our school systems in education. Hello, five percent of this country Islamic. Biggest voices in the municipality and in the school system. Hello, Parsi Koi. The president said, Yala Haru, Mara. Yes. Yes. The revelation of the same land will cause a revolution of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, yes. So the baton has come to you. Now listen to this. President Mandela, on the 1st of February 1995, decides the resident of the, the residence of the presidency needs to be changed. From Westbrook to what? Why? Because he's looking for the same anointing of the same man to be in the one of salvation. Anybody can really want it. And come into a governmental position if God has anointed you. Oh, yes. a word on us that's about to change your continent. How are we doing? Hallelujah. So in 1999, am I mixing this thing up too much? In 1999, at our conference, I stood up and said, please, I need somebody to stand up and have the guts to take the baton of the slain lamb. Because we need to see the type of intercession restored that was sent to us from Europe. Because these people sent it, they died for it, they sold themselves as slaves, etc, etc. That is the background. And I actually have an Eastern European background. Both my parents are Croatian. So if you're wondering where the Fermat is coming from, just forget it. Okay. I'm not English and I'm not Afrikaans, so if you're confused, it's okay. Are you listening to me? So I stood in Hanan Dan and handed a baton over to Lionel. 
Do you know Lana? What's his name? Lana Vista. I said, Lana, you can know a koi beast. You can say stand up. And I stood with other people there who were all of the other nations. I said, you're all repeating now. I said, because I'm standing for Eastern Europe and I'm handing you this baton and we are restoring it now because this seven years, the first seven years, you are taking as God's perfect plan when, when the baton arrived. Okay. And then it cooked for 48. And let's see who stood. Magdalena stood. Come on. Okay? Magdalena stood and her daughter stood. And then this thing needed to be picked up again. So the first time it came was 1737. It's 269 years. It's sure. been cooking a really long time. So, you know, when something, when a good curry cooks a very long time, and I start. He's near lekker and near bottom. As what they all was in the begin. You see, they were cooking curry for you, praying for a hundred years. You understand? And the curry pot came here, and then it's been cooking for a further two hundred and sixty years. This thing is exploding dynamite. Yeah. Power. Yes. Yes. But you guys have got the DNA and structure makeup to that. Yes. Amen. Okay. So we handed the baton out and people were crying all over the show. And I said, will you have the guts to pick it up? Will you have the guts to go and pray? And will you have the guts to ask God to begin to open up the destinies of the nations, of the people of this continent? Because I want you to understand that the first will be last. And the last will be first. So you were the last. Yes. Because you see, after we did this in 99, there was an official recognition by the government that the Khoi San were the 12th tribe. It's a governmental number. Number 12. Where Number 12. You stand in the number 12. It's about the government. Because the slain land He's standing in government when he opens up the scroll. Hallelujah. It's awesome. Oh, yes, it's yes, awesome. yes, yes, God. And then you know what? Mm. When you touch the government, then you start to touch internationally. And so what happens from Paris? They say, release Saki Bartman, send her. Yes. Yes. People write poems. They get all excited. Yes. Why? Because we touched the government, we changed our status. Hello. Excuse me. We went from Jacob to Israel. Do you understand? Yes. We did. And then we thought, responded. Isn't that amazing? Like anyone's like, hello? What? <laughs> Who? What the? Who's that? Do you understand? And now we have parliamentary recognition. Now we have land being spoken about. Because you see, we are coming into our destiny. Because when there's a roof, there's a property. Yes. We're being redeemed with our stuff, everybody. Yes. We're going to be yes. redeemed with our stuff. We're going to cut into our stuff. Yes. But you see, it's more than the stuff. It's the anointing. It's going to break me. Amen. You know, in um, 1996 or something, I think, 90 something, I was invited by Tom Hess to his first All Africa prayer deal. And there I was. And we prayed in the OAU. We still haven't become the African Union, but we were the OAU. So all these countries were in the OAU for Africa. And I saw something similar to Graham Power's vision. I saw Jesus lying on Africa like Elisha lay on the, on the widow's son. He was lying on Africa. His arm was around Morocco. His head was facing Israel on Egypt. And his arm was actually on Israel for me. And his feet, guess where his feet were? In South Africa. You see, I just want to say to you, it's going to take an anointing of a people who are broken. See, it takes a woman called Mary Mandel. 
isn't it? Yes, God. What does she do? She takes her perfume. You see, an anointing was put into you. Yes, an anointing of fire, an anointing of prayer, an anointing yes. of tears mm -hmm. back for the nation. But if you don't break over the feet of Jesus with this thing, these feet will not be anointed. Because you see, when you begin to march, you become my feet, says the Lord. And when you begin to touch, you become my feet. So the, the vessel where all of these things have landed is a vessel called the Khoisan people. But that is the base of the perfume in this vessel. Because you know what? We've got added notes. You know, when you make perfume, you have a perfume base and then you add a little bit of vanilla and a little touch of rose, but not a lot. And just a touch of citrus. And so, the brown people. There's a little bit of rose from England. And a little bit of lavender from France. Hallelujah. And there's a little bit of buchu from the Korean. And a little bit of rooibos. Rooibos, yeah. And there's a touch of sugar cane from up country. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of aloe from Kozale. Yes. Where you have that Yes, yes, yes. Because when you break people, on the feet of Jesus as a people, as a nation. And you come into your destiny. The rest of Africa will be covered with the incense yes. of the smell. Because everyone has been put into you strategically. So that the rest of the continent will smell you and say, this almost. That's our smell. I can smell. I can smell my mommy in there. Yes. I can be almost ice. I can get me. I can buy Malay cinnamon spice. Kiwi. Raisins. Coconut. You see, the Dutch went and fetched the spices. And he brought it to the south of the Garden of Africa. And they came on ships to be servants. But they mixed in. Yes, Christ. They mixed in as well. And there's an incredible fragrance that God's about to release from the rainbow people. Out of a queer people who understand how to march under the same land. But they're going to carry every tribe and people because it's already inside. It's not on top. Yes. Amen. It's in your DNA. You carry all those nations in your DNA. Governmental intercession. And you see, when the Holy Spirit begins to blow on the garden on the south, and the wind of the Spirit begins to move in the garden on the south, it's going to release the sweet spice smell yes, God. of all these fragrances that have been blended. <laughs> and it's going to blow north. It's going to cover a continent oh, of people who will recognize their own smell in 
and yet may work. And the prayers of the saints will come up as incense throughout the continent. And there will be a presentation on the sea of things because the Khoi people have understood. Yes, they have come to perfume the blood. They have come to oil the feet of Jesus mm. in the continent of Africa. They have come to release the other tribes and tongues. You see, because he who goes first is going to break this womb of yes, darkness yes. for everybody else that's coming behind. If we can position the Khoi people correctly on the sea of glass, if we can bring a presentation of who they are and they can take their place, it's going to be a domino effect for every other tribe and, Absolutely. and people and nation. And we can practice this song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Yes. We are coming into our governmental position. We are being a position. Es war doch um die